Friday the 15th. Welcome back, Rob fans. Yes, it is breakfast brunch time for me. <laughs> I'm just about to have my brunch. It's another early start today because by the time you watch this, I'll be out having my Christmas party, my Christmas dinner, the Steve the Barman and Friends Christmas dinner and party and booze up. So that's what's in store tonight. So uh, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be having some fun tonight. Uh, so let's start the day off. Uh, what do we say? 15th, nearly open the 16th then. Uh, we should. There it is, down the bottom here. All this week, I've been super impressed with all the rums this week. I've, yeah, even even the one I said I wouldn't buy, the OVD, I've, you know, it's been a, a good result having it. And I'm glad I added it to the box. So big, big fan of everything with five, well, four from, well, we have one, two, this, yeah, four, one, two, four from four so far. So today, this is a white. So it's definitely not brandy. We're, we're doing well. I said all the brand, the, the, you know, we top loaded up front with brandies. And, but the brandies are now going to be at the end, I think. So, what's this? Oh, oh, this is going to be interesting. For those of you that don't know what that is, and you're looking at that, going to Facundo Neo, this is the other branch. I don't know how it's kind of uh, loosely fitted around, but this is the other branch of Bacardi. This is their premium range. Right, I, bet, I, I think I better put a granola. I, put a granola. I was going to sit here and munch the granola while I was tasting it. I thought, no, that's, a, that's a, you don't want to see me munching, so I will put that to one side. Right, uh, let's dive into this. So the Facundo, um, hang on, I need to get the prices up, don't I? Let's, uh, let's, let's there. So the Facundo, yeah, if you're thinking, what is Facundo? Facundo is the, um, what's the word? Inventor, that's not the word I'm looking for. What's the word? Inventor of Bacardi, basically. Uh, I've forgotten his, the other names that go with him that you probably recognise, but obviously, but Facundo Bacardi, Bacardi, Finca, whatever. It's Facundo Bacardi, I think. I think that was his name. There's other names in there. Um, he's the founder many, 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 many years ago, and it was forced to flee um, Cuba, um, in, uh, set up in the US and uh, uh, now uh, Puerto Rico. But when, so for Bacardi, to commemorate this, released a new range of rums, 2018, 2019. I've had the Eximo before in a dram, which was the very expensive one, but I've never had the Neo. Now, the Neo caught my eye because as far as I can remember, the Neo is an eight-year-old rum, eight-year-old rum, but obviously in true Bacardi fashion, especially with their Carta Blanca, uh, charcoal filtered. All right, so it's got rid of the color and they claim not so much flavour. But as far as that goes, I've never tasted this. And I've got a big, big love for whites. I say unaged rums, but you know, is this going to be like a proper aged rum that is just white? I, I don't know. I'm looking forward to this. But prices um, just about breaks my barrier on this page. £54.24. pence. Uh, so it's the Master of Malt price, Master of Malt, it's Master of Malt, it's Master of Malt. Go and buy your booze from Master of Malt in the UK. Um, these are all paid videos, so I can do this. <laughs> they're not paying me, they donate, they gifted me this, uh, they let me build my own box. So they're not paying me to do this, they just said, yeah, Steve, do you fancy building your own box? Of course, yeah, let's do it. So that's how this whole month's working. But you kind of knew that because you've been following along daily. So 5424 translates to 69 US dollars. 63 rounded down euros, uh, 103 Australian dollars, and 93 Canadian uh, Canadian dollars. So that's for a 70 CL. That's the relevant kind of thing to what we would pay for a 70 CL. All right? Right. Little little nosing, a little whiff. Now, this is one of these phenomenons that I've not really experienced up close and in, in personal yet. And I can't wait for the British guys to some of them, the, my, my good mates, to go down this route because I'm super intrigued to see what happens when you take a three-year-old rum that's been aged in barrels and uh, smell it, uh, like have a little dram of that and then have a little dram of it after it's been charcoal filtered if any of the British guys are going to do that. And the same with like a five-year-old rum because, the, honestly, I, I don't really get too much aroma off this. Um... A vague hint to rum, like sugar, um, but there ain't much else going on in it. I think this is a 40% rum. I'll, I'll double check that in a minute. But I, a loose alcohol vibe to it. There's nothing, you know, 
I don't get creaminess that I would do traditionally off uh, column steel Spanish style rums. I don't get fruit. I don't get. I don't get any of that grassy citrusiness that you get off uh, column steel uh, French rums like Martinique and Guadeloupe. Um, this just smells like neutral, well, not neutral, but almost neutral rum spirit, if that makes sense. If you ever smell NGS, so a neutral grain spirit, like vodka essentially, but if you ever smell that, there's nothing to it. It's just alcohol. This is almost there. With a slight, with a slight rumminess to it, it was just slight. I I could be here for another half an hour. I ain't getting much more off that. Right, interesting. Fifty four pound. I don't know. Let's see what a taste is like. Wow, I don't know where all that flavour come from because it's certainly not in the nose. But wow, that really that's that shocks me. <laughs> There is genuinely nothing on that nose, but taste, that is a very, very different story. Uh, where do I start? Um, rum. Um, molasses -y cane. Actually, I'm going more of a cane juice vibe to that. Not in the, the Martinique sense, but as in a sweet, that sort of sweetness, cane juicy kind of thing. Don't don't think I mean agricole or anything like that. I'm just going sugar. Let's, ju let's just say, let's just go that. Liquid sugar, without it being overly sweet. That's the first vine. It then goes off into marshmallows. Um, it then goes coconut. I'm getting... I'm going to say marzipan. Well, it's obviously almond, but I'm getting... And I've had a few bits recently. That's why I'm going there. But marzipan, like Christmas cake. I've, Christmas cake without marzipan, you know, why bother? It's, you've, got to have, you've got to have marzipan, you've got to have icing. Christmas cake, some fruit cake, standard. I'm getting all those vibes. It comes back to this sugar, liquid sugar drink again. Again, I, I want to emphasize that. I don't mean sweet, but I've got that taste profile of sugar. And then maybe, maybe apple gel. Wow. This is going to make very interesting daiquiris. Very interesting daiquiris. So the second tasting, what I always do is that I then sort of swill it over the tongue around my mouth. Banana comes out now. This is bonkers. How can all that... See, this is what I mean about the phenomenon of charcoal filtering. What does charcoal filtering actually do? Yes, it removes colour. Yes, standard. We get that. But what's it actually do to the spirit? Because so many distillers are that produce, you know, what they call proper rum are vehemently against charcoal filtering. But why? I, this is the phenomenon. Because I've not experienced, because I've not experienced that fact that this is what it tastes like and smells like before charcoal filtering, and this is what it tastes like after. And again, you know, so many people have got their opinions on it, and I've been around people that have got their opinions on it, and I've always asked them, have you smelt the rum beforehand? And they've always said no. And it's this, it's this thing, it's, this, it's what cracks me up. People slag things off before having, before both sides of the story. You know, the the recent one, the, the arguments we've had to, to go down there, is, and this is quite funny again, is that you can't, you know, you, you can't have cane juice rum in the UK, in the British Isles, because we don't grow it here. Well, why not? Well, cane juice should be juiced within hours of picking. Okay. Is that true? Is that, well, well, it's what Martinique says, so it must be true. And then you speak to some Haitian uh, um, clarin producers, and they're like, oh, no, we, we leave our cane, you know, out to out to dry for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then juice it. We want to get, we want to evaporate all that sort of water so we concentrate the flavours. So who's right and who's wrong? You know, the, to say you can't have cane juice rums in the UK is bonkers because no one's ever done it. Except for, well, the Goldstone. John gets it get, gets fresh juice from London and it's fermented within hours, you know. But the cane has obviously travelled from Jamaica and Uganda, I think it is, uh, to get here. So, you know, it's this thing. When people are against charcoal filtering, but why? Have you actually tasted and smelled the rum before and after to see what the difference is? 
if you're out in distilling countries in in Barbados, in Puerto Rico, in in Dominican Republic, in Jamaica, and all that, then granted you probably have. But for those in you know those that preach online and preach, you know, in, in, when I've met them up in, I know full well they've never tasted before and after. So I'm really interested because ultimately that's a long-winded waffle to say this tastes nothing like how it smells and it boggles me that how all those flavors can come out with no aroma there at all there is absolutely zero aroma there apart from a slightly rummy neutrally spirit but on the tasting oh flipping god i'm so torn with this now i i would potentially because <laughs> it's 54 what did i say gone again it's died 54 pounds a bottle 69 us dollars i would potentially buy i know it's not cost effective but i potentially buy another couple of drams to have a daiquiri taste with that before i made my mind up of whether i wanted a bottle at face value i love sipping that that is totally Here's, here's a bonkers statement for you, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know I'm going to get slated, but I'm sorry, here's a bonkers statement. That is almost on the level of Martinique rums without the agricole vibe. So all those fruit notes, all that, and the grassy citrusness that comes off agricole rums, take that to one side, and the rest of it is coming out, there's so much fruit coming out of that. So, a little bit of nuttiness, vanilliness. But maybe touch sweetened? I don't know. But a little bit. It's very easy to drink. But again, is that the charcoal filter? I don't know. It's an easy to drink. It's a 40%er. Um, I'm sitting on the fence with that at the moment of whether I buy a bowl simply because of the price. I don't think at face value it's a 55 pounds 69 dollar rum i don't think it's quite there but taste wise is that something i really really enjoy and i'm so it's so light it's obviously column still every bone in my body wants to try that as a daiquiri i think that is going to be a fantastic phenomenal daiquiri rum that's just really really thrown me and that's put me in a really good mood for tonight. So I'm out, off to uh, iron, iron some shirts, um, have a little fashion parade, get my get my dance on because tonight is Christmas dinner night. If you've had this, let me know your opinions below. Face value opinions. Don't get all preachy. Don't go me me me. I just want face value opinions. I'm thrown by this, but this is flipping delicious.